What's up guys, Mikkel here, and in this video, we're gonna cover one of my favorite topics, which is private ledgers and Ripple's CBDC initiative. There is a lot of people saying that XRP won't be used at all in Ripple CBDCs, and they are using completely different technology outside the XRP ledger. In this video, I wanna show you why I think XRP will tie into these private ledgers, and I wanna show you guys exactly why I am convinced XRP is going to be an integral part of this plan. Make sure to stick around for this whole thing. This is a massive bullish thesis around the company Ripple and XRP, so I think it's super important to fully understand. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Make sure if you haven't already, you like and subscribe. It's gonna help me out so much, and it's really gonna help this channel grow into the future. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange I'll pull down in the description of this video. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So I want to start this video off and just give a quick shout out to XRP Crow on Twitter. He actually creates a community XRP poster every single year and it looks like this year I actually made it for the XRP YouTubers. I thought this was super cool. I have seen this poster go around the XRP community every year for the past four years. So it's really cool just to see myself on it. It definitely, it's kind of a weird feeling for me, especially because a lot of these YouTubers I actually learned about XRP from so it's super cool to see myself next to them definitely go follow XRP crow on Twitter and all these other youtubers they really are incredible and I think you kind of get a different perspective from everyone out there it's a really cool community it's so cool to be part of all these other influencers all these people taught me so much and really taught me a lot about cryptocurrency when I first got into this space I really felt like I was learning from people that didn't really understand cryptocurrency they were just telling me that Bitcoin was the only crypto cryptocurrency out there that meant anything and if anything you can maybe dabble in ethereum but everything else out there is complete trash once i got into learning about xrp and learning from all these other influencers out there i really learned what cryptocurrency really was it's a decentralized payment network that's going to change your entire financial system and that just wasn't a narrative being put out by other cryptocurrency influencers the rest of the cryptocurrency space seemed to be talking about jpegs and these micro cap tokens that really weren't doing Doing anything and for me I just saw this super powerful technology and couldn't understand why it wasn't being used where it seemed like it was supposed to be being used which was the financial sector. People in the XRP community really opened my eyes to understanding how cryptocurrencies could have real world applications and how they really could be transformational in our current financial system. Anyway though, definitely a big shout out, super happy to see I was on this poster. Definitely go follow these other YouTubers, there's so much great content out there and it's so cool for me to be a part of it. So now I want to move on and actually quickly talk about Bitcoin because US Senator Elizabeth Warren was actually in an interview and she said with Bitcoin there's nothing actually actually to it. There's nothing that backs it up. It's just a belief. Now, I thought this was so interesting because U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren is one of those people who always tries to play down to the underprivileged people. She always makes it sound like she's trying to stand up for the people who need the most help out there. But at the end of the day, not understanding Bitcoin is really a first world problem. At the end of the day, there are countries out there that have horrible hyperinflation and their currencies are losing 90% of their value every single year. These are the people who need Bitcoin. These are the people who run to Bitcoin because their currency is being hyperinflated into oblivion. And Elizabeth Warren is out here saying it has absolutely no utility. There's nothing that backs it up. Bitcoin is a savior for these countries who are getting rapidly debased. And at the end of the day, if you're not able to comprehend that, it's just a first world problem. We're lucky that here in America, we don't have to worry about our currency being completely destroyed. Maybe one day we will have to based on where we're going, but right now we don't. So not understanding Bitcoin, not understanding that Bitcoin does more transactions every single year than Visa, just shows and saying that has no utility, just shows that you really don't understand what utility is. And all of you guys know that I'm not some massive Bitcoin bull, but I still think it's absurd to say that it has absolutely no utility and it's not backed by anything. It's backed by a decentralized payment network that no government can take down. And at the end of the day, there is so much utility there, and that's why it's being used. 
Countries all over the world, their citizens are resorting to Bitcoin because essentially their countries are falling apart. And for Elizabeth Warren not even to be able to slightly comprehend this just shows that she doesn't actually care about the little guy. She's really in the pockets of the big banks, she's in the pockets of whoever's willing to give her the most money, and it has nothing to do with actually helping the little guy out. At the end of the day, these people need Bitcoin in their countries because they have no other option. Their only other option is to hold a currency that's getting rugged from beneath their feet. And it's just so funny to me that some of the main points made by these politicians are things like, oh, Bitcoin's too volatile. No one is going to want to be holding Bitcoin if it drops 50% in a year. Well, at the end of the day, dropping 50% in a year is still a lot better than your currency going down 90% because of hyperinflation. And if you just zoom out, you would understand, well, if you hold Bitcoin more than a year, you're probably not going to be down. You're probably going to be up massively. So it just shows what kind of people we're dealing with here. People are trying to regulate this space who have no idea what's going on. It's so disheartening to see these people who are yelling the loudest be so ignorant to everything happening in this space. The good news is, though, it shows that we are not late to this industry. We are very early. None of these politicians are calling the internet a scam. None of them are saying, oh, email's never going to work out. It's some decentralized Ponzi scheme. The fact that these people can't even wrap their head around the most basic things happening in this space just shows we are extremely early. One day we are going to look back at tweets like this or comments like this and just laugh because they are going to be so wrong. And it's going to look the same exact way as the people who couldn't wrap their head around the internet, the people who couldn't wrap wrap their head around automobiles. These people are always wrong. The technology always prevails. And this is just going to be another example of these people completely missing the boat. And now I want to finish this video off and talk about Ripple's CBDC initiative and how private ledgers are actually going to help contribute to XRP's price over the long run. I see a lot of people on Twitter saying that, oh, XRP is not going to be used in Ripple's CBDC product. It's not going to have any impact on the price. I just really don't understand this narrative. At the end of the day, Ripple's incentivized to try to make XRP go up. They hold 50 billion and Ripple's really a company based around the asset XRP. They're going to try to put XRP into as many products as possible because it's really the heart, it's the beating heart of their entire business. I tweeted out earlier today, people said Ripple wasn't using XRP when they first started ramping their cross-border payment solution. Turns out XRP was always an integral part of the plan. The same will be true for their private ledger CBDC business. All roads will lead back to XRP. For those of you who weren't around earlier, when Ripple first launched their cross-border payment solution, they weren't using XRP in the ODL format. It was just a messaging layer and companies had the option to use XRP. Well, instantly people started jumping into the FUD. They said, oh, Ripple's never going to use XRP. They just have that option to try to make it seem like people are using XRP. There's no reason to use it. This project is completely independent of XRP. And what ended up happening? Ripple had the option to start using XRP. They perfected its use in the product line. And because of that, it made more sense for customers to start actually using XRP in the product line than using Ripple's product without it. So all the people who were saying, oh, Ripple's not ever going to use XRP, it's not going to be used for cross-border payments, were completely wrong, and they just couldn't see the bigger picture. Well, what we're seeing right now in Ripple's CBDC product for central banks is that it's actually based on XRP private ledgers that aren't using the XRP you and I hold. But that doesn't mean that they're never going to be using the public ledger. At the end of the day, the simple fact that these countries are willing to build CBDCs on private versions of the XRP ledger pretty much proves that they have interest in using the public ledger one day in the future. Do we really think all these different countries are going to build closed CBDCs that can't interact with one another? Of course not. And it's the same exact way that payment providers adopted Ripple's cross-border payment solution. They didn't start off using ODL and XRP, they started off with the messaging layer, realized they liked it, and said, okay, what else can you do for us? XRP is a critical part of Ripple's long-term plan, and it just doesn't make sense to me that Ripple wouldn't one day have products in this CBDC platform involving XRP. 
There's so many different ways to look at it, and I just think it's important for people to understand that XRP is going to be part of the equation. And if you just take a look at something as simple as this, and this was actually tweeted out by Bob Way, what we have is a bunch of different currencies in their own little box surrounding the public XRP ledger. Well, you can think of each one of these different boxes around the XRP ledger as a private ledger. It's not using XRP, but if they want to link up to each other, they're going to have to use the public ledger. So some people are coming out and saying, oh, XRP is not actually being used in these private ledgers. These countries aren't going to be using XRP on their private CBDCs. Well, yeah, maybe not directly, but it doesn't mean XRP is not going to be an integral part of the final product. It clearly is going to be. It wouldn't make any sense for it not to be. And I just think it's so important that we kind of get away from this narrative of saying, oh, well, right this second, XRP is not directly being used in this technology. Therefore, it's never going to be used and it's never going to increase the price of XRP. We really do need to go back to thinking about some of these products and how they fit into the Internet of value. The the internet is not a closed system, and neither will the internet of value. These countries are going to have their private ledgers, they're going to have these private technologies, but at the end of the day, that is such a small subset of what is being built here. The big thing, what is really going to change everything, is the internet of value, which is going to be open, public, and interconnected. The only way you can get that is using public distributed ledgers like the XRP ledger. And that's why for me, seeing Ripple get countries using private ledgers is just one step closer to them ultimately using the public ledger. These are really important things to understand. And just so you guys know, we're actually already moving towards this transition. It looks like in the next couple of weeks, Ripple is going to be launching their side chains to the XRP ledger. And that's going to make it so different countries, different central banks can actually build on ledgers adjacent to the XRP ledger, directly use the public ledger and XRP on their private ledger, and that is almost the perfect mix of having a private ledger and having access to the public ledger. You can slowly see how Ripple is trying to build this new ecosystem of sending payments, this new financial system of interconnecting this, and some countries are going to want a private version of what's going on, but be able to link up to the public version. I just want to get rid of this narrative where everyone's saying, oh, Ripple's actually building these new products. They have nothing to do with XRP. Your XRP is going to be worthless. That could not be further from the truth. Ripple has 50 billion XRP. They want the price to go up more than we do. And at the end of the day, they are going to be incorporating into XRP into every single product they possibly can. And I think CBDCs are going to be a massive use case for XRP in the future. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, Mickle out. Woo!